Okay. Um, good morning once again and welcome to our live skills class on BC315. So even before we can begin uh, with our session, request one of us to please lead us in prayer. Yes, you are very thanks. Yes. Father, Father, we thank you for the time come. This morning, we praise and we worship you, Jesus. We glorify you, Father God. This time, Father, we ask you that, Lord Jesus, as we are going to return about life, Father God, help us to learn and be excellent. And Father God, help us to move towards the be excellent so that we will glorify through that, Lord Jesus. We submit man and all the Students to your mighty hand, God. Thank you, Jesus. We commit this time to your mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, for praying. Okay. So today we are going to begin on a new chapter on time management. Do you think it's very important for each of us, despite the nature of a task that we are in? Do you think it is important for us to know about time management and how we can manage and excel in this skill? Have you ever wondered how, how is that some people that, you know, who are around us, we see them, they manage their time so very well. And they're able to do various tasks and they're able to complete and keep up their time. So it makes us wonder how can they manage their time. It's the same thing. Like we all of us have 24 hours in our hand. And how certain people can manage their time well. Yeah. Certain people can manage their time well. So how is it? What are your what what is your take on that? Like how how is that? some of us or some people around us, some leaders that we look up to are able to manage the time well. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So any of us can unmute and share. Time, I see Charles has put a uh, comment on the chat saying time is a resource need to manage. Maggie says planning. Agni also confirms seconds and by planning. Anyone? Anyone? <clears throat> So it's not like some of us have less time in hand, some of us have more. It is the same 24 hours in a day that has been given to each of us. And how is that we can manage? Okay, Maggie says, uh, you know, we need to come up with to-do list. Okay. And I also see Siddharth says we need to prioritize in a task. And I have Asha say, time keeps us on track and also helps us in a daily schedule. Like we, okay, like what we have at our Bible college on campus. Mm, yes, actually putting a schedule or a to-do list, like what Asha and Maggie say, will help us so that we uh, follow the schedule to keep that time so that that can be one of the way how we can redeem our time to manage different tasks that has been assigned to us uh, it can be in our workplace or ministry or in our business so that is one of the way you know the to-do list or having a, a schedule on a priority base which will help us to manage time so here we see the definition of time management they say that it is an ability to use your time productively and efficiently so you could also think of it as the art of having time to do everything that you need without feeling stressed about it yes it is it sounds simple 
but then practically it is much hard to um, you know apply it or uh, to practice it but here in today's uh, session we will look into some of the practical side or some of the principle uh, behind the good time management so the time management skill are essential because um, we all have enough of time but the only thing is how are we going to manage it how are we going to manage that every task that has been assigned to us at the workplace or in the ministry the different tasks that we have to be implemented how are we going to manage in the time that each of us have as we all remember, I mean, uh, uh, keep, keeping in mind that we also have a family. Some of us are married, we have a family. So we have a personal life and a professional life and a ministry that we have. So how are we going to manage all these? Like, you know, all these three areas can be equally important to us. So how are we going to divide or how are we going to prioritize our time to each of this task? We're going to see a few of them in today's class and we can discuss how better can we do. So some of us in the class can share your input, you can share your views or share your experience, what worked well and what didn't go well. So that we all can have, you know, can understand better on planning the so time management is defined as using your time productively and efficiently. But what about when we are working as productively as possible and we still cannot get everything done? So it, it may be better for us to think about the time management and a combination of both, like working productively and prioritizing our time in other words we also see people who are good at time management are good at getting and doing their things better so they keep certain tasks ahead and they'll try to achieve that they set goals for themselves and they try to achieve that or complete that or reach those goals in a certain period of time or every year they plan it uh, for a year, they plan for five years, certain plans they plan it on the long term for 10 years. In this decade, I need to see myself grow, personal growth, professional growth, ministry growth. You see, for each area, they set a task. They, they set short goals, maybe it can be a week, month, or a year long goals like in five year period and 10 year period and then they try to prioritize and they try to work how do they work so they break that long goals into short ones so that in shorter time if you are able to reach those short goals in this less period of time eventually we will reach or uh, we will reach the long so how do we do that? In two ways, we can um, we can understand the task and uh, differentiate between urgent and important. So what is urgent and what is important? Class, you all can go ahead and share your views. What can be an urgent task? And what can be an important task? You can unmute and speak so that it becomes more interactive because when you put it on the chat, our e-learning students may not get the gist and I have to just repeat what is there in the chat for our e-learning students. So if you can unmute and ask your question or share your views, it may help all of us. What is the difference between urgent and urgent task and important task? Um, uh, urgent is which needs immediate attention, like 
keeping all the priorities set, we have to immediately pay attention to it. Important can be, uh, you know, second to urgent, <laughs> where, you know, we do the things so that, uh, you know, uh, it is taken up in time and uh, we, we don't face any problems if we ignore it. But yes. Thanks, Abhi. Thanks for sharing your view. Anyone, any any examples, any illustration for urgent and important? Yes, we understand that urgent task it demands an immediate action that needs to be that need to be taken. And important, we see that um, it is important. May not be urgent, but it is important. And if you do not do that task we may have to face a consequence for not doing it on time. So this is something that a fine line between urgent and important, but then it requires the person to complete it on time. So is there any example that you would like to share? What is urgent, what is important that you came across in your life or from your experience that you would like to share it with the class? Asha, I see your hand raised, please go ahead. Urgent is when, um, like, example, a person that is in an accident and we need to go through, go through this. And emergency, um, important is, like, example, we have a thing that needs to be fulfilled at the point. Ma'am, you are muted. Yes, yes. Okay. You all got it? No. Oh, okay. 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 So everyone understood what Asha Rani said. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you are muted. Sorry, Asha was here. He was trying to say something. Okay. So Asha was sharing on urgent and important. So Asha, you shared like urgent is something when somebody meets with an accident and you're there and important is... Sorry? Okay. When things need to be addressed or done by the person at that time, yeah, important. So, anyone else would like yeah, to share? One example that comes to my mind is like exercising daily. So, uh, it is important, but it's if something comes up where you have to avoid uh, that particular day's exercise, not able to go for a walk or gym or something, whatever you have. So that can be, you know, it is important. You have to do it daily, but uh, urgent means something that needs more attention than that. That's what is coming to my mind. Yes, yes. yes. That's a good example. Thank you, Agni. Thank you, Asha, for sharing that. Uh, the need between the urgent and the important. Yes, it is important. It is urgent, but there is something like it's urgent. You need to act on it immediately. It is an important task. Yes, we can consider it, but it is important. We have to do it. Yeah. So the distinct, the distinction between these two, the urgent and important, is the key to prioritize our time. That can affect our workload in our business, in our workplace, in our ministry. So what happens? It enables us to work out what to do first and what can be left either until later or do it later, like what you know, how many were sharing on. So if we leave an urgent and consider an unimportant task, so there is a consequence that we need to face on. Right? So that was a very good example of what Asha shared. There's an accident that can be an urgent, immediate help that we need to look into it. I know it is important for us to reach 
uh, or office or a, a conference or meeting on time but on the way you have seen or you're addressing an accident case that you need to be there it is life and death matter so that was an urgent need you need to be there that you know you can help yeah so uh we have a, a grid here for matrix let me share that with the class then we can discuss further on that Okay, so here is the matrix which shows, um, you know, uh, action like high importance and low importance. So it all depends on the task that we have. There will be certain tasks which is highly important. There will be certain tasks that, you know, it needs less attention or less important. So even in high important tasks, when you have delegated certain tasks or when you have assigned yourself with uh, a, a certain task, your schedule shows up with certain high important tasks. Even in that, for example, you, if you have listed five tasks, so in that five highly important tasks, you can still prioritize what should be addressed first and what can go next. And then the low importance, that is much lesser attention needed, okay? Which, uh, you know, in that, how do you prioritize? Which is high urgency or low urgency? Which is important that you need to do it now, or you can assign it, look into it a little later. So how do you, uh, how do you assign these tasks? Any, any examples that you can think of? So when we look at this matrix, now, to review, to review the schedule that we have prepared, it can be good for us to review our, our task that we have scheduled on daily basis for ourselves. So which of uh, like for me, my task needs doing within the next 48 hours. So those would be an urgent task. And second, I'll see uh, what is the urgent task, which ones are very important for me. And I will see uh, how I can reschedule it or work it or uh, prioritize it. So it may be a good idea for me to list my tasks in order of importance rather than giving them an, um, you know, uh, absolute important or saying not important and delaying it. The third question I can ask is, are the non-urgent tasks, which ones are more important? And again, we can look into our schedule, look into the task that has been scheduled for that day and ask the question, is it a good idea to list them in order rather than giving them an absolute distinction. So what we can do, we can look into the schedule, the task that you have been assigned as, you know, highly important or low important, and then you check it. Okay, this one we can go first. This I can do it later. It needs to be done today because it is important, but I can do it much later, not immediate. Or there are tasks that needs more of my attention. I need to have a clear mindset, a fresh mind, and it needs much time for me to understand, analyze, and uh, prepare a strategy, come out with clear thought than the other task. So what I would prefer is, I would prefer, though it takes much time, and I would prefer to do that first in the day because my mind is fresh. I'm ready to work. I have a fresh mind, clear thoughts. 
you know where i can i can be more i can be more thoughtful i can have great strategy great plan at that time so i would try to start my day with a huge task and then go with the second important tasks okay so mark twain says uh, i have just taken this quote from mark twain where he says if it's your job to eat a frog it's best to do it first thing in the morning and if it is your job to eat two frogs it's best to eat the biggest one first do we have a frog eater in our class have you any time to try it isn't it it just says like the bigger task huge task which needs much time much research uh, much thought process to be involved if you do that first when your mind is clear first thing in the morning then the other things can be looked into it next so so we need to decide what we are going to do about the task that has been scheduled on a daily basis in your to-do list or in your diary. And also, you can consider delegating that to someone else. Because it's not that all the tasks need to be done by you. If you try to do everything by yourself, then you may lack excellence in your task. So in that way, if you have a huge task to do, which you can consider, which is very important priority, and you can keep it to yourself to give your best. And the other, the less important task can be delegated to your team members or to others, where it needs less attention of yours, where you can just coordinate and expect others to complete the things for you so that you can complete uh, you can reach your goal that you have set for a short term and eventually long term. So now we can eliminate, uh, looking at the list, you can eliminate the non-urgent and the non-important task. See if you can delegate them and you can, you can uh, pay attention more to the urgent task and later to the important task in your schedule and with the time that you have at hand that you can do it. And finally, here you can start doing your work. You can go with do now list. Certain list that you check and you say do now, start this one, two, and three, the task one, task two, task three, and start doing it. So eventually you will complete the tasks that you expected to do in a daily basis. And if there are more tasks that you can manage in quadrant, it is important for you to put it this way, like do some, delegate some, and eliminate some. So you need to see what you can do, what you can delegate, what you can eliminate. So when we look into our schedule on a regular basis, and you can prune out your matrix in this way, which will ensure that you can focus on what really matters and you keep uh, you can keep that workflow flowing. So uh, you know uh, you can you can delegate. Is it important? Is it urgent the task? And you see what is not important. You can eliminate or delegate so we need to remember that um, you know um, for example it is good for us to have a health check so you can see it is important but it may not be urgent but when it is important, you don't consider and give time to it. And you always consider your work on a priority base and keep procrastinating uh, on your health. You will land up, there will be a certain time where it becomes uh, urgent. Okay, so we need to pay attention to every task, even when it is important to do it within that certain period of time, so that that important task may not become urgent to us. Um, 
Um, as I said in the beginning of our class, like there are tasks which may be uh, professional, personal, and if you have a business, business three tasks you may be handling in your life. So how you can give your time, how you can have that work-life balance, how you can manage your time eventually to all these three. So you look into the same matrix. We look into it and we say like, you know, there are tasks, some of them are personal and some of them are professional and some of them are ministry related. And you need to schedule your work and see which is urgent, which is important, and which can be delegated, which can be eliminated. And then you start concentrating, dividing your time and see how you can balance it. And that way, you can manage your time well in that. So there are, um, you know, there are certain principles that we can discuss in today's class for good time management. It says the priority matrix that has been showed in the graph here is a key to prioritizing our workload. So in time management is more than just prioritization. It is also about being able to work more productively. So there are a number of other ways in which we can improve our efficiency and productivity. So what are the three ways that we can um, we can work? Um, there are not three ways, I'm sorry. There are not. Just give me a minute. I'll just list the task that I have. Okay. Give me a minute. Okay. I see it's five. Um, two. Okay, so in our note three, I see five, but then I've also listed some extra points to us. So that can help practically how we can, uh, you know, manage our time on a daily basis. So I've listed some more points to it. So we have 10 points. So I'll just go through them. Okay, so to get us started and how we can manage our time or, you know, this time managing is a skill that it takes time for us to develop and where we can look at it differently for each person. So how we can get our work done best, how we can be excellent in our work. So that all depends on how we manage our time, how we redeem our time in our daily life. Okay, so let's get started. The first point here is delegated task. So it is common for all of us to take on more tasks than we are capable of completing it. Isn't it? We like to take many tasks. Most of the time, it's, uh, I mean, I've learned it in a hard way out recently, but then we like to take more responsibility, but then often result in stress and burnout. So we need to learn to delegate. It's good to take tasks, it's good to take responsibilities, but at the same time, we need to have a good team. You need to build a team and try to take the responsibility and delegate it to your team to accomplish what you want to do. So delegation does not mean that we are running away from our responsibilities. No, I'm not talking about that. But delegation means instead of, um, you know, overburdening yourself, but having a team with you who, to whom you can delegate your task, but at the same time, you can see to it, you can accomplish the task in the way that you have planned or in the way that you have expected. And at the same time, you're, you are actually achieving or you are uh, actually uh, trying to complete much more than what you can individually do at a time. 
So this will not only free up your time to concentrate on the urgent and important task that you can do, that is very integral part of your life, part of your personal, professional, or ministry area, but you can do it excellent in that area. And the second point I would like to address here is prioritize your work. So before the start of the day, let's make a list of each task that needs to be complete, uh, needs to be immediately attended to. So unimportant task, you can uh, address it a little later. And what is important or urgent, you can consider them first. The third point is we can create a schedule. Carry a plan or a notebook always with you. List down all the tasks that comes to your mind. Either it can be at the end of the day for you to plan your next day or early next day. You can just plan out the things like simple. You can make a simple to-do list before the start of the day and prioritize the task. Focus on the essential ones like that is very urgent. And then you put the important and unimportant things that you can be dedicated. And make sure that all these tasks are attainable in that day or in the time period that you have set. And if there's any big task that you need to complete, make that the only thing on your list so that you can push others to the next day. So to better manage uh, time management scale, we can think of making three lists. Like I said, it can be your work, ministry, and then personally. And then you can see what is urgent, what is important, what can be delegated, what can be you know, considered later, or what can be eliminated. That will help give you a clear plan how to manage your time. The fourth in our list is set up deadlines. So when we have a task at hand, let's say, uh, uh, let's keep a realistic deadline and stick to it. So once you set a realistic deadline, it may help us to write on a uh, write on a note and put it near your write a sticky note and put it near your workspace and this will help us visually to track us and keep us much focused on the tasks that is assigned ahead of us when we try to set a deadline a few days before the task is due so that you can complete all those tasks that may get in the way. So challenge yourself and meet the deadline. And then reward yourself for meeting the difficult challenge. In that way, you are appreciating yourself as well. And the fifth point in the list today is overcome procrastination. So this procrastination is one of the things that has a negative effect on our productivity. It can result in wasting essential time and energy. So it could be a major problem in both career, in our ministry, and in our personal life. So we need to consider that and see how we can avoid this procrastination. Because for many of us, it may be a difficult thing to overcome. We tend to procrastinate our work, our ministry, our personal life, and go beyond something else. So we need to try to schedule in small fun activities throughout the day to break up more difficult tasks. So this may help us to stay or be focused on a task that has been scheduled on a daily basis. With that, we will move on to the sixth point. Now, what is it? Sixth is deal with stress wisely. So all of us get, get uh, stressed, isn't it? So stress often occurs when we um, <clears throat> accept more work than we are capable of accomplishing it. So what happens? The result is that 
our body starts feeling tired, over exhausted, which can affect our productivity on a daily basis. You get burned out. Sometimes, you know, people give up. So we should not allow that to happen. We should schedule our task and see what we are capable of. So I'm not telling you not, take, not to take responsibility or not to challenge yourself to take up a higher task. No, I'm not saying that. It is good to challenge ourselves. It's good to take up a, a great or a bigger responsibility. That is where we see ourselves grow. But what is more important is, depending on the task, the size of the task or how big the task could be, we need to have the equal team member who can assist us in that work. Only then we can be excellent in that task. We can bring that task into completion in a, in a wonderful or much more expected way, better than what has been expected. And at the same time, you won't be stressed. So stress comes in various forms for different people. But for some, it comes in a productive way, the way they handle their task. So how we can get out of the stress if somebody's stressed at work, ministry, in your personal life? Certain things that uh, you know that I would like to share. There may be different ways, but few ways uh, which I would like to share with the classes. You can go out just for a walk in a calm, peaceful environment. Second, you can consider doing some exercise, giving some time to yourself your body some of the, for some of them uh, you know meditation works so if they can practice meditation to calm your mind to calm yourself it's good the fourth some of them depending on each one okay what is comfortable with you for some it would be good just call a friend your family member with whom you could you would love to talk share and discuss it's good Come out of that work or that stress mindset, talk, discuss on something else that could help you come or overcome the stress. Or you can also participate in your favorite hobby, play a game or get into some kind of hobby activity. Or for some of them, just listen to your music. Play some kind of music, relax, so that you're relaxed, you're out of the stress. So the key here is let's find what works to each of us so that we can lower our stress response and we don't burn out ourselves. Okay, so yeah, uh, just came to my mind. Even if somebody wants to do this breathing uh, technique, for some it works. So you can go ahead. For some, they love to go out on eatery what they like to eat. So relish your time on something that you like to do that can overcome this stressful habit. For some, what matter you have a family, uh, you can also play with your kids. That's one of the best moments that you could have. Take them out, play with them. That's another, you know, stress buster. Okay, with that, we will move on to the next point, seven says avoid multitasking okay see one thing we need to know and we have learned in the professional management is multitasking is good yes it is good we need to multitask we need to learn many things that's how a leader is developed a leader is able to multitask at the same time he's able to manage different teams learn the technique of different teams yes that is good Okay, that is how it should be. But what we are talking here is, at the same time, you're trying to do two or three different things at the same time. Okay, we're not talking about multitasking is overseeing different uh, projects or overseeing the, in fact, a person, as a person, we are multitasking in our daily life. The same person, we are one individual, but we are handling our personal life, our family, our work, our, our ministry, 
Aren't we multitasking? Yes, we are doing it. But what we are trying to uh, make a point here, avoid multitasking is, for example, take up your ministry or take up, let's take an example of your class. Okay, we are supposed to listen so that we grasp what has been taught at the class. So when you're, when you're listening of what you're doing in the class, at the same time, if you take up a phone, if you take up a call and answer the call and you are chatting with somebody, can you multitask? Can we multitask? I want to listen to what my uh, faculty is teaching in the class. And at the same time, I want to converse with a friend. Right? For example, the same thing. I'm in a conference. I'm in a seminar. I need to pay attention to that. At the same time, you cannot work and do something else so we are talking about that type of multitasking which may not uh, help you to be efficient in the task that you're doing that may hamper our productivity so we should avoid that type of multitasking okay so on a larger scale multitasking is good so are you able to get what I'm talking about class. When I say multitasking, uh, just by overseeing many other things, or as an individual handling your family, personal life, ministry, uh, business is good. Okay. But I'm talking about at the same time, at the same moment, multitasking. I'm talking about that. So that we okay we may not be efficient in our productivity we may not be efficient at the task that we do at the same time that is not a good one uh, that those are the uh, things that we need to avoid in multitasking class am i clear are you able to grasp what i said or is there anyone that uh, would like to share your views on that please unmute and share your uh, thought Class, is there anyone that you would like to share your thought? Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so I hope that the class is clear, they're able to understand what I meant when uh, to avoid multitask at the same time is not right. At, I mean, that minute, okay? But on a larger scale, multitasking is good. That is an advantage what we have. Okay, uh, yeah, we have Harrison here who has raised his hand. Please go ahead, unmute and share your views on this, Harrison. If it can give a clear light, clear picture to our class, it would be great. Yeah. Harrison, you can unmute your mic. Am I audible? Okay. Okay. So I see your hand raised. Yes, Charles. Okay. We can hear you very well. Very audible. Okay, great. Thank you. So I was here. We are learning, so we are paying attention. Because all okay. those things are helpful for our personal administration and having time well used thank you okay okay thank you charles so with that we will move on to the next point it is start early so most successful people when we look at their life we see that one thing in common with them is they start their day early as it gives them time to sit think plan schedule their day so when you get up early you are more calm, creative, and have a clear head. So the day progresses. And you see your energy level starts going down, which affects your productivity and motivation and function. 
So in the when you start a day early, you're like energetic and you can accomplish the major tasks in that time. And you can schedule the later one or less important one to the other half of the day. So if you're if some of us are not a morning person, you can just try waking up 30 minutes earlier than your normal time. And later, you see, gradually, you'll see yourself amazed by how much you can get done in that bit of time. So if you don't want to use it to work, use it for an exercise or, uh, or develop a, a good uh, eating, ha healthy breakfast at that time. So this kind, which develops a routine habit with the new, will also contribute on a longer run and also the goal setting that um, you know we are developing or we are uh, trying to reach uh, you can also work at that time so if you take the 30 minutes early if you set a time 30 minutes to wake up early and if you can use that time to something uh, better that you want to learn or develop within you, you can concentrate on that time and it will help you on a longer run. So I see Charles, your hand has been lifted. Yes, thank you so much Pastor, for allowing me this opportunity. I wanted to talk about uh, doing uh, things early. Uh, I am a morning person, so I wake up early. But there are these times when we have um, overnight fellowships online. You know, with the, the corona and the lockdown, fellowships are done online and you are online uh, very late. You sleep at around two or three. So you find yourself not waking up the normal time you are supposed to wake up. And I find my tasks not really done well because I have not woken up at the time I was supposed to wake up. So planning, uh, waking up early is really, really, really important and it gives you a very big um, energy to accomplish bigger tasks when you consider the matrix, the matrix and you do those ones that need strong energy early, then you will be accomplish a great deal during the day. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Charles. Thank you, sir, Charles, for sharing your input. Okay, as we're running out of time, but they have already passed time. So I have just two points to share. I quickly share, maybe I'll take two minutes. Is that okay with the class? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we, we are talking on time management and I'm taking two minutes extra to complete the task that is with, I mean, I have to complete. Okay, well, quickly, let me complete. That ninth point I have here is take regular breaks. So taking regular breaks will help us overcome uh, our tiredness and, uh, you know, even if you're stressed, it will really help us to overcome that. So we need to take a regular break of about 10 to 15 minutes from your schedule and, you know, uh, take a walk or just relax yourself, have a cup of coffee or tea that can relax your mind or just look out, uh, look at the uh, scenery or do what works best with you. But these regular breaks in between your work, ministry, or your business will help you uh, to be energetic during the day. Okay. And the last point, then says we need to we need to learn to say no. Okay. Uh, but I know it is very hard for some of us to say no because you know the task around us is very important and we need to get it done. But at the same time, we should not be overloaded or overburdened. Okay. We should just learn to politely refuse to an additional task when it comes to us. So if you think that you're already overloaded with your work, then take a look at your to-do list before accepting any kind of extra task. 
it's easy to accept the task. But at the end of the day, when you're not able to accomplish or give your best to that task, it's not good. So many of us, you know, we worry about saying no because we may sound selfish or may, uh, you know, may not, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, be, uh, we are not showing our, uh, you know, or it may affect uh, our reputation. But then at the end of the day, you see, if you say no, maybe the task can be assigned to somebody else who are capable enough to complete it much better in the way that you could have done. Because you have, your plate is already filled. Your plate is full to take up another task, isn't it? So we need to look at the end result of that task. So keeping that in mind, you need to think, will I be able to give the best? When, when you think, uh, when you're able to analyze that, and then you should know that, would you be the right person to take up the task or would you like to say no politely? Okay, so I'll leave the class with the final thought. When we get things, uh, too much in our plate, it becomes uh, more difficult. So when we, uh, when uh, it is always good to take the things that where you know uh, we are able to focus and uh, give our best. We need to be excellent in all the work that has been assigned. So it is always good to take the task that we can be, we can complete with excellence. Okay. So good time management requires a daily practice of prioritizing and organizing them in a way that can save time while achieving more. So I hope some of the strategies that we shared, the 10 points that we shared in this class may help uh, in our work, in our personal work, at our ministry, at our business. Uh, I pray and hope that we can apply it in our, in our daily life. But top it all, the first in our time management, I would like to share is um, when you start your day, give your first fruit, your first time to God. When you give that first, it's like offering the first fruit to God. It's just not about the tithe. It's not just about the uh, offering of you know any material, but even your time, even your time. So when you start your day, when you offer that first. A uh, few minutes, a few yeah, few minutes, or a few hours, according to what you have in hand to God. You see, the rest of the day in your schedule, He will help you to put things in place because you are not walking alone. You are walking with Him, where He'll give you an abundant in everything, like in your wisdom, knowledge, and the understanding. You know, our God is beyond the time. For some of us, I'm not too sure if you have experienced, but then I have experienced God can expand our time. We all have 24 hours, but when we offer it to him and ask him to partner with us in the task that God has assigned to each of us, when we pray, God, expand my time. The God who did it with Joshua, he made the sun stand still for him to complete the battle. Do you think the same God cannot do for you and me? We can do it. He's still on the throne. We can achieve much more than what is expected. That's why God says, when you look up to me, you will be excellent in everything that you do. Because it's not you, it's me who's in you. Okay? We have a greater God who's dwelling in us. And because we have a greater God who's dwelling in us, we can do much greater, bigger things in our life, in our ministry, in our work, in the place where we serve. Okay, with that, I would like to end this session. And uh, yeah, I'll end the session with a word of prayer. Dear God, I thank you that you are ministering to each of us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray and we bless each student in this class. So, Father, and the ones who will be joining us on e learning, we pray that you will be with them, you will lead them, you will strengthen them, you will guide them, and you will be with them. Thank you, Father, that you will expand our time. You will help us to manage our time well, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all next week. God bless. Thank you.